a pharmacological view. We are aware that uh, we, the country is celebrating Ajadi Kamrut uh, Mahotsav, commemorating 75 years of uh, independence. And as part of that, ICRDPR has been conducting a series of uh, webinars for the last one year. And as a part of that, now today we are meeting virtually in this uh, webinar for having the invited presentation from Dr. G. Srinivas Rao, Professor and Head Veterinary Department of uh, Veterinary Pharmacology and Toxicology from College of Veterinary Science, Tirupati. And especially I welcome uh, our beloved director, Dr. R. N. Chatterjee sir, uh, for uh, this webinar and all the esteemed uh, delegates who already joined and uh, others who are going to join shortly. So before inviting Dr. Rao for the presentation, so I will just give you a brief note of uh, the bio data of Dr. Rao, a, sim a man of simplicity and high achievements. By looking at him, we never know that he has this much of caliber, but that is his way of uh, doing the things. And good friend of mine, we were classmates in BVSC, and later on we chose different lines for specialization. And he coming to his uh, academic uh, uh, background, he did his BVSC and MVSC from uh, the same veterinary college, uh, Tirupati, and then PhD in veterinary pharmacology from IVRI. Then uh, for a brief while, he worked as an uh, instructor at Bidar Veterinary College, then joined ARS, worked as scientist and senior scientist in the Division of Veterinary Pharmacology and Toxicology, IVRI, Izat Nagar for 14 years. Then he moved on to the State University, the Tangru, Acharya Anjirang Agriculture University. And there uh, he has been working as a professor and head of uh, Department of Veterinary Pharmacology and Toxicology. And uh, from 2018 to 21, so he took up the administrative uh, responsibility also. He acted as the Associate Dean for the College of Veterinary Science, Gannavaram from 2018 to 21. So after that, again, he has come back to science. Now he's concentrating his uh, time on uh, uh, academics again. And uh, he has 30 years of teaching experience and uh, he guided eight postgraduate and uh, six doctoral students in the field of veterinary pharmacology and toxicology. His uh, research interests are drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics, phytopharmacology and food safety. He also was a part of uh, an active member of uh, the ICR network project on food safety and uh, pesticide residues uh, for which IVRA was the lead center. And then he, ha he has handled several projects uh, sponsored by uh, DST, DBT, ICR, and also National Medicinal Plan Board of Government of India. And uh, he has uh, several publications in uh, high impact journals of international repute some of which are like uh, analytical biochemistry, archives of environmental contaminants and toxicology, environmental toxicology and pharmacology, general of applied toxicology, general of food and drug analysis, international immunopharmacology, European general of drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics, international general of biological macromolecules, and also British policy science. When he was at IVRI, so he was collaborating with the CARI scientists and uh, he had good number of publications in poultry as well. So this is all about, in brief, about uh, Dr. Rao. Rao always uh, believes in simplicity. I just, he has sent me a half page of uh, biodata. I asked what is this? He said that is enough. So before uh, requesting Dr. Rao to uh, start the presentation, I request our beloved director to offer uh, opening remarks. Thank you, Raju Gado. Good morning, everybody. Namaskaram, Srinivas Rao Gado. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Actually, uh, you are having very wide experience and you have worked in different organizations. You are having very good experience in different fields of pharmacology and tox toxicology. And uh, uh, it is a pleasure for me to welcome you in this program. We are, we are uh, organizing different type of lectures in different fields related to poultry uh, under the umbrella of uh, Ajadika Amrit Mahotsav. Uh, that is being organized by all the ICR institutes and uh, different other organizations also. So I think uh, all the uh, listeners here, they will get benefited. 
and uh, we have uh, we have some we have done some work on uh, herbal drugs which can be used as as uh, amr maybe phytobiotic is also related to uh, that field and uh, maybe uh, that type of things uh, will come during your presentation and we will get benefited from your presentation uh, while you are going to present uh, on uh, on phytobiotic aspect which can be helpful for or beneficial for the poultry sector of this country uh, thank you so much for invite uh, for uh, for your uh, uh, you know kind gesture uh, to deliver a lecture uh, in our uh, omrit uh, mahotsav lecture series thank you so much and i welcome all the uh, all my colleagues from different institute as well as this institute uh, thank you so much once again i welcome dr shrinivas rao garu thank you thank you sir thank you for your nice uh, remarks yeah thank you very much sir as you rightly said like we always uh, have been working on uh, phytochemicals or herbal agents to mitigate stress like summer stress in nikra dr ramarao has done a lot of work on various herbal agents and right now two of our scientists dr paul and dr suchitra they also have been working on alternatives for uh, agps antibiotic growth promoters so most of which are uh, plant based so being applied uh, scientists we always look at the effects but the pharmacological pharmacological basis uh, most of the times we are unaware and there actually comes the uh, the expertise of a uh, uh, person like dr rao so that's why we chose and immediately agreed just a few days back only requested him and uh, he kindly agreed to deliver this lecture so thank you so much now we'll uh, go for the presentation dr rao please okay thank you sir thank you i will share screen hope it is visible yes it is visible go to okay. the uh, slide mode now. okay it's okay now <clears throat> slide slide all ah, right uh, it's okay yeah. now thank you very much dr raju for being a nice uh, courtesy remarks on me and i once again thank uh, director director of poultry director of poultry dr chatterji garu and other uh, my previous uh, senior colleagues and friends and who are linked to this zoom uh, today i would like to have a, an interaction with you people rather i will some of the work i will share and some uh, the recent information in this field what is happening on the phytobiotics uh, phytobiotics is analogy with the antibiotics what you everybody knows this term phytobiotics is also known as phytogenics and most of the phytochemicals which is having some antimicrobial activity generally they are you know, considered as phytobiotics and these phytobiotics came into the field now uh, from the past 15 to 20 years uh, as an alternative <clears throat> for especially uh, in the animal production including poultry to use them as a growth promoter uh, to especially when the amr is uh, becoming a big concern in the world so with this uh, prelude i would like to continue my talk Uh, on the selecting phytobiotics for poultry production yeah. under the pharmacology means ultimately when you are doing any agent for a drug a therapeutic or non therapeutic purpose what is its uh, pharmacological uh, situations how it is going to alter the physiology of the animal or bird how it helps and when you want to develop or when you want to screen some of the compounds what are the things we have to take into the consideration keeping a scientific rational as a background okay we know that many synthetic feed additives like drugs or antibiotics used in poultry production to maximize the efficiency of production until recent times because since animal proteins are required for the growing population there is a demand and we have to ultimately nourish the people with the healthy food and at the same time we have to see the safety aspect also so taking this uh, into concern i am most of the animal health industry made many formulations which we aware as a veterinarians whether it is a poultry entrepreneur or veterinarian poultry veterinarian or in science, scientists who are involved in this poultry production so many of the this antibiotic drugs and preditives so far to enhance the production both by growth promotion as well as in case of the disease outbreak also we use for therapeutic purpose you see the present scenario what have an antimicrobial use in food, food production what is happening for the past 10 years up to 2 months what is the production 
the the top 10 countries which are using this antimicrobial for especially in food animals whether it is a therapeutic or non therapeutic purpose there is a likelihood of positive growth suppose a open bars are there the previous means what is the present and the colored bars are there for what is the production up to 2030 that means suppose china is a lead if you see the in india at there is a at least we are making the uh, up to 2030 at least 7% whatever we are using 7% more we have to use especially in case of food animals whether it is therapeutic purpose or non therapeutic purpose including cattle uh, cattle production or pork production or poultry and if you see this uh, quantifiable terms you can see that nowadays see there is one for 148 mg antimicrobial you have to use for kg of uh, chicken that is the ultimate projection or ultimately statistical projection what we have uh, that means each kg of chicken production we have to use 148 mg antimicrobial uh, as uh, the current trend is uh, global trends uh, if you see the in the present and when the anti antimicrobial used in for food animals by the world's top 10 customers uh, this is a bloomberg uh, estimation you just see there is a up to 2030 i think 82% uh, project means increment will be there of antimicrobial use in uh, india uh, since it is a big country and large country involved so that naturally it will be more and then followed by mexico china brazil and iran and so so far then coming to the antimicrobial use in food animals in india as a class of medicine means what are the compounds which are ultimately growing uh, especially the post tetracycline you just see the tetracycline you can see the pencils pencils mostly the cephalosporins they will be uh, especially in case of um, uh, cattle you just see the sulfonamides and quinolones so these are the dominant compounds which are ultimately incremental uh, value is there means tons of the compounds are going to be used in 2030 when compared to the what is present suppose if it is 6000 600 tons there is a tetracycline is going to be increased at least reaching 885 by 2030 this is also bloomberg uh, projection then okay when you are using all this antimicrobial especially in case of whether you use therapeutic or non therapeutic ultimately it is coming to the product which you are consuming whether it is egg or pork or meat or milk if you see the uh, literature data search uh, by 2021 Uh, up to 2021 you have seen that uh, there is a milk is dominant the residues we can see in milk is dominant there are 27 publications were there it is a well published reviews are there then coming to the after milk it is a seafood uh, it dominates but if you combine with the poultry and its eggs it is a second company 15 plus 8 it will be 23 that means it is followed by milk means the antimicrobial residues when you are consuming after milk it is a next commodity seafood as a whole but if you see the bold part as a whole both x and chicken it will be occupy second and so that means poultry production we should ultimately make it safe safer uh, by controlling this antimicrobial use if you see the again when you are coming to the matter antimicrobial residues uh, mrl level above and mrl again here you can see that uh, after milk poultry and egg what will be coming together it is more than uh, all more than milk is above mrl we are, we are watching this this scenario in the global or oh, coming to the india just many of the ngos and even central disease for dynamics economics and policy delhi in the recent past they did that uh, they are when they randomly testing the poultry farms in punjab they could see that there is 1500 uh, 5556 e coli isolates there is 11 different antibiotics were got resistant in human health so the resistance development for the different compounds coming to nalidoxic acid tetracycline ampicillin uh, cotrimax means that is sulfa sulfa trimethoprim combination and ciprofloxacin that means here tetracyclines fluoroquinolones and sulfonamides and then uh, pencil pencil means uh, cephalosporin compounds are uh, pencil compounds so these are getting more and more uh, 
resistance. Then coming to the ESPL, that is a uh, extended spectrum beta lactamase inhibition, the bacteria are also showing uh, multi drug resistant organisms are getting isolated. Even this ESPL, most of the uh, recent and powerful antibiotics also they are showing resistance. Then, based on this law, now it is not only in India, in the other countries also it is there. We cannot be blamed for everything. And this MR mortality projection in humans is in Asia, I think in by 2050, there is 4 million, more than 4 million people going to be get affected. That's the reason why people say the another pandemic is nothing, the EMR is another pandemic is about to come in the future. Uh, in, in most of the continents, Asia followed by Africa and Europe and North America. So these are the global trends, projections of AMR mortality in humans in coming years. So under this uh, scenario, now there is a, people are thinking about, especially in the farm production, animal production, including poultry, uh, phytobiotics. What are these phytobiotics and how, you know, why to be used? and how we can replace the existing antimicrobial use or how we can lessen or reduce the uh, antimicrobial uses or critically you can use the antimicrobial whenever it is necessary by taking the help of these phytobiotics. So most of these phytobiotics, you can see that phytobiotics mean they especially people in coming to the plant products other than prebiotics, probiotics, and symbiotics. So one is, Reduce the your main target is reduce use of antimicrobial drugs and uh, at the same time to enhance the pro um, production of the uh, poultry or poultry products like egg and meat, especially in case of milk uh, or pork, whatever it is. Is the phytobiotics can be totally alternatives or simple adjunctive to means, means whether it may be adjunct or alternative. When you say that phytobiotics, there are a number of secondary metabolites from the organic compounds, especially plant synthesized for their own, uh, for, for their own uh, survival or for their own, because they are secondary metabolites, they are not nutriently essential for them, but they require for their uh, diseases, resistance or insect repellent or many other activities. So that's why they synthesize these secondary metabolites. Most of the secondary metal may be alkaloids, maybe glycosides, maybe saponins, maybe polyphenols. Out of these, the polyphenols actually dominates and which is having a, a more uh, activity, bioactivity. And when you say historically, the 40% of the drugs, what we use, whether it is animal origin or human, the humans in uh, humans or animal uh, practice, 40% of drugs are coming from the plants only. That is, in a, it is not a new. See, for example, you can see aspirin. It came from the uh, one Philippine uh, Palmeria, paclitaxin, artemisin, antimalarial drugs, or anti cancer drugs. And most of the drugs are today what we are using, they came from the plant origin. Okay, these beneficial effects of phytochemicals are mainly attributed to the, their antimicrobial activity and antioxidant properties. So, antioxidant property is a broader term. There, you can see the here. They, suck, they can suppress pro inflammatory markers, they can low inflammatory uh, condition, which is induced by the either stress, environmental stress, or heat stress, or infection stress, or managemental stress. So, all this can be uh, comes under the antioxidant, means uh, the oxidative stress related. So, most of these plant secondary metabolites, to especially they synthesized by plants for to get from the, they themselves synthesize because of when they feel stress condition. So that's the reason why these compounds have the very good antioxidant properties. And these antioxidant properties are also related to the immunomodulatory activity. So one is these uh, phytochemicals, they may be active in the and pathogenic bacteria, and they may be improving the productive performance or lessen the stress. And at the same time, they may encourage the, uh, the uh, gut microbiota, which is required for the uh, animal. So in that way, in both the ways, it may be useful for us. 
Okay, when we are uh, using a phytobiotic, a broader term, that means all are coming from, it may be small herbs, it may be uh, roots and leaves and bark of the plant. Uh, then essential oils from the plants or gums, only origins from the some of the plant extracts. So all they come under the phytobiotic plant, this one. So when you are reaching all these phytobiotics, Organochemical means you see the chemistry, they may be a terpenoids, you can they may be phenolics, they may be saponins, they may be polysaccharides, they may be glycosides and flavonoids and alkaloids. Then, if you combine all these things, there are three important uh, we can uh, one is polyphenols, then is little bit alkaloids, then essential oils. So, most of the phytobiotics actually the products we are using either polyphenols or essential oils. So that means these essential oils are aromatic plant extracts. You just may be many things. They may be feed additives or antioxidant growth promotion. They may be food industry, the flavors and fragrance, preservatives also. In a cosmetic industry, there may be perfumes and skin tonics. In pharmaceutical products, they are medicines and they may be insectal or antimamines. They have the number of active bioactivities for these essential oils or polyphenolic compounds. If you see that these essential oils are polyphenolic compounds, is they, they will have the simple two, three phenyl rings or two phenyl rings. You see the terpenoids and there is a quinones. There may be phenolic acids, either hydroxycinamic acids or gallic acid. Then there may be tannic acids. There may be chimerins and alkaloids like berberine. Then flavonoids like myricetin or uh, quercetin. So here, these, these are the different compounds or different phytochemicals we can get from the plants. So this benzoic acid, cinnamic acids, actually we have the phenolic acid. These are very much interested, especially as a feed additives, uh, you can see. Then coming to the allergic acid and flavonoids. These are the flavonoids and, and phenolic acid are having a more interest in especially in comes to the uh, animal production. Then, then see, see the simple benzoic acid. We know that benzoic acid and salicylic acid aren't, but we'll see simple here. We know that phenol is itself is an antiseptic and which is having simple ring, hydroxyl and carboxyl group. Then the benzoic acid is having a, a polar nature, it's water soluble also, whereas this cinnamic acid, this is this structure is known as phenyl proponoid. This is phenyl, this is proponoid. The phenyl proponoids are very much interested in, in means uh, explored compounds, especially for the uh, antibacterial activity or antioxidant. Yes, this is the cumeric acid and the caffeic acid. And you make you can see the number of uh, articles uh, people are using caffeic acid, chicoric acid, rosemary acid, especially in case of poultry production as a feed additives or to control the salmonella uh, infection. Then, okay, basically these polyphenolic compounds, flavonoids, it helps the plant itself, you know, to plant to get heat acclimatization, seed maturation, seed germination. So it is an ultraviolet filter for the then It may fragrance of flower and taste of the fruits because most of these pigments, colored pigments, whether it's fruits or flowers, they may be flavonoid origin. And they may be helpful for the plant to, whenever the drought is there, to, uh, to make it a, a competitive, to survive in the uh, in case of abiotic stress. And it may be pollinator attracting because of its color pigment, and it may be helping wound healing, and it may be detoxifying and stress management. This ultimately, this is what the flavonoids are doing in the plants. The same thing will be having effect in case of uh, animals or humans. So most of the antibacterial active phytochemicals, just like our antibiotics, how they act. So they may interfere with cell wall synthesis. They may disrupt the cell membrane permeability. They may interfere with bacterial physiology. They may inhibit the efflux pumps. They may modify the action of the antibiotics and make bacteria more susceptible for the uh, antibiotics. And 
The another important thing is, especially in case uh, it inhibits biofilm formation and it attenuates the bacterial violence. By all these actions, these uh, polyphenols or flavonoids, they help us uh, the uh, host, whether it is a human. Whenever the essential oil targets bacteria, the cytoplasmic oil, it is a leak of metabolites and ions and alteration of the membrane fatty acids and alteration of the proton motive force, increased survivability, and it may coagulate. Yeah, all this factor, it may quorum sensing action also. So that's where they help essential oils to be a good antimicrobial uh, as well as antioxidant. Then again, the flavonoids, that is about the essential oils. You can see the flavonoids, they may act on the DNA gyrus or uh, some of the flavonoids, they may be inhibited you know, by ATP, ATP synthesis. Then there may be some flavonoids like quercetin, they may act on the FSA fatty acid synthesis, especially cell membrane, which is the fatty acid synthesis developed. Which cell membrane is important. Fatty acid, wherever it is there, then bacterial toxin inhibitor, then it inhibition of the chlorum sensing. So in case of uh, in virus, viral, some of the viral enzymes. So means they have the multiple action, these flavonoids, especially the quercetin, morin, luteolin, rutin, very commonly available. So they have a wide variety of bioactivities. Bio okay, there are already these mechanism actions are well studied, especially allicin, which is present in the garlic. So there is intracellular reaction, especially in case of salmonella typhimurium. So how it is a thi with thiol group, it is having a organosulfur compounds, allicin. So it is inhibition of RNA synthesis, whereas berberin, which is uh, available in berberin aristata. So it is uh, one of the important compound now where people are, uh, in case of cancer also, they are trying. And DNA intercalation and interaction with cytoplasmic membrane, especially in the model of basal series and carbocal, carbocal and thymol. So most of this uh, E. coli, pseudomonas aeruginosa, cephalococcus aureus and typhimurium. So they may be acting on the cytoplasmic membrane and different herbs under their uh, suppose aragona and thyme garlic so the, these are the plant names and what are the main constituents for each plants carvacol and thymol then capsaicin and menthol cinnamaldehyde anethol so all are now people are trying for the its utility as a fidelity then most of the phytobiotics are mediating through the ability to hold and it has the host defense again against microbial infection, so thereby giving a good antimicrobial activity. At the same time, the combination of some of the phytochemicals, especially when you are using for therapeutic purpose, when you use these combinations, they may actually be helpful also. So they ultimately, their negative consequences, enteric infections are controlled by this uh, compound along with the antibiotics in the low doses, it helps us in healthy production. So uh, this is how this schematic diagram, how this different antibacterial drugs acts. Then how the synergy, it is uh, pure compounds, how the uh, phytochemicals, whenever the drug resistance is coming, how it is interacting with the uh, drug resistance developed by the bacteria against particular compound, it is helping a pictorial, this one. This is also pictorial. Okay, now coming to this one. Let us see strategies for poultry production with this uh, AMR and whatever it is. The antibiotic residue and public health and trade these are the important issues for us. So how to manage the nutritional management, health management, and we have both layers and trailers. Then there is a environmental contaminants which may coming from the feed or some other route or water. And in this aspect, let us see what are the different studies done by using these plant products or, uh, or some herbal uh, already in Ayurvedic preparations where of, uh, of uh, herbal origin. There is one interesting uh, study, antibacterial activity of some Indian Ayurvedic preparation against enteric bacterial pathogens. They have seen that trifola when you combine with this, some of the, uh, it has given a wonderful 
results when, com when compared to the, the other. Means there are different com preparations were used, like uh, Dashimola, Haritaki. But Trifala has shown very good uh, uh, antibacterial activity, especially like in the antibacterial pathogens. What exactly Trifala contains? Okay, leave it. It is Ayurvedic preparation. For them, it is a, traditionally they will use uh, three plants Haritaki. And uh, <clears throat> Amla and Harad. So they will use three plants. What, what this trifla contains mainly phytochemical is quercetin, gallic acid, and acid. So uh, one is they reduce the oxidative stress, the another is inflammation. And they help the some of the gut microbiota which is required, and they mm -hmm. Down regular means they inhibit the E. coli and other undesirable species in the gut, so that helping the healthy gut. Okay, with that we, we also did some on, some work on the especially fish bacterial pathogens by using fercetin and other phenolic acids. So we used phenolic acid and gallic acid, anisic acid and gallic acid. We used cinnamic acid and quercetin. So we have we have seen that some of the bacterial pathogens, uh, aromas, heteroplasma, it is our uh, one of our students did. And we have seen this is in vitro study where we have seen that there is a these both means exclusively quercetin and other phenolic acids, they have shown some synergic act activity in the fish uh, against fish bacterial pathogens. Then we have taken one uh, oxytetracycline. Uh, because it is commonly used in fisheries, and with this we have used some of the quercetin and uh, phenolic acid to study what it is exactly. Here also we have shown some of the interesting finding uh, of synergy with the oxytetracycline. And when the quercetin, especially, you see some of the one study by the you at all against the E. coli resistance. Uh, Again, anti means antibiotics E. coli. When they have seen that, how it is see, you can just see how both uh, when it's combined with the tetracycline, how it is completely cell membrane and other things are completely damaged. Uh, it help it, it is helping quercetin and tetracycline combination. Previously, it was very resistant tetracycline. When it is combined with, it is really showing a good activity. Uh, and the same tetracycline in the presence of quercetin. So that means these compounds can be an adjunct with the, some of the antibacterial drugs, which became resistant, but still we can use when you combine these uh, phytochemicals. There are some interesting, uh, so uh, suppose if you see the poultry, what are they? These are salmonellosis, necrotic enteritis, polybacillosis, campylobacteria, and uh, coccidiosis, histomonia. These are the, yeah, especially productive importance, and how they are going to affect the poultry production. So these diseases, when combined, when, when we, if you target some of the, see our demand is these diseases, gut diseases, if you can control in the poultry. Uh, because anyway, we are using most of the antibiotics in the production. So if you can reduce by using the phytochemicals. So one way, one way is we can reduce the antibiotic uses. At, at the same time, we can Production also will increase by targeting uh, these enteric infections. Okay, when the anti when you see the poultry diets, so here our phytogenics are phytobiotics, as the essential oils helps ultimately helping in the gut, and some organic acids. May most of the people are already doing a lot of work in the prebiotics, probiotics, and organic acids, and but in case of phytobiotics, where it is acting. So increased gut microbiota and oxidative effect and antimicrobial properties. They improve palatability and improve digestion, growth, growth promotion also. Okay, so this is, this is one interesting review. If you people are interested, you can go through. All some might have already gone through. So here is polyphenol and gut micro interaction chicken. How it really helps? How it really helps a healthy old production? So here you just see that. So most of the dietary is the turmeric, 
rhizome, nano curcumin, curcumin. So different studies were done by different authors internationally in broiler chicken and uh, Chinese and Japanese quail also. And in case of layers, and, and when they have seen that, and what are its beneficial effects and mechanisms also they have noted them. And this, that means, this polyphenol extracts like the terminella chabula, that's what water is called. Terminella chabula is one of the ingredients, especially used in case of trifala. That is one of, means one fruit, amla and this terminella chabula. This terminella chabula is having an excellent soluble tannic acid and gallic acid. So they will specific pathogen previous animals and condition, you just see that. The extract decreases the morbidity and inflammation used by E. coli and down regulate the activation of the nuclear factor kappa B signaling pathways. So one interesting thing I would like to say, the nuclear factor kappa B. So this is a marker actually for us in oxidative stress in recently, because once you have NFKB and NRF balance, if you can do that molecularly, it can really all pro-oxidative status in the animal induced by, the pro-oxidative status will be induced by the, in the animals by heat, by infections, by, by infections, again, there is a bacterial infections or viral infections or any infection. So that means that is ultimate target. And recently, there are a lot of studies are doing on NFKB signaling pathways and what are the phytochemicals, especially even in case of the cancer. So because whenever you are in a stress condition, so ultimately you are prone for the, uh, you are vulnerable for the infection. So then you can just see the how reservatrol, heat stress uh, chicken they used. Then again, in case Japanese quercetin and most of these phytochemicals, the recent studies people used in the chicken and they got a, a some positive results and hopefully we can take a cue from these studies and we can also further go, because many people are already doing but when you want to start any work on the phytochemical and especially scientific by whether it is a crude extract or whether you purified chemical so you have to a random approach by having the literature search or ethnopharmacological data we can take and computational and mechanistic in silico, we can make it up nowadays because of using the most of the software uh, chemical libraries and go for in vitro assays. Then in vivo models, we can later study. Then we can go for pre clinical testing. So that means here, plant kingdom maybe means most of the times you can select grass substances. Grass means generally regarded safe. Most of we are using our spices and culinary, uh, because culinary substances plants or vegetables or fruits, grains, whole grains. So most of them are, so we, this is sikimid, the most of this are hydroxycinamic acid. This is synthesized by the plants by sikimid pathway. The sikimid pathway is a um, very secondary metabolite pathway in case of plants. This is uh, similar to our humans where phenylalanine is synthesis, synthesized. Here also from phenylalanine in our plant, there are number of uh, compounds are coming, uh, hydroxycinamic acid, like picumeric acid, ferulic acid, caffeic acid, because this is a phenyl propanoid. These are phenyl propanoid. This phenyl ring with propane chain, very small molecule, but will have a very good bioactivity against the most of the antimicrobial uh, organism, means microbial organisms. So you can select such type of compounds and go for antioxidant activity screening and antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory and reducing chronic diseases and increasing hormonal secretions. There will be so many models we can study. Then ultimately, once after this, we'll, they will coming into the alternative use of this hydroxynamic acid in meat producing animals. So to combat pathogenic infections, to improve the health status, and improve yields and carcass and meat quality, and increase growth performance. So these are the schematic uh, approach where we can go while screening the compounds, especially in the poultry interest. 
we have a lot of databases also available from the biocompatible drug discovery. Suppose, suppose we have Indian medicine plants, phytochemistry and therapeutics. We have the, from this link, we can see this database contains largest phytochemical Indian medicine plants. So from this, we can select some of the uh, phytochemicals uh, rich uh, medicinal plants. Then there is a metabolic metabolomics. This database also will can use the compounds which are using on different metabolic pathways. Okay, this is a cardiovascular herbal drug database is only for humans, you can see. Then Duke's phytochemical and ethnobotanical database, we can search for the compounds for from the plants for bioactivity. And traditional Chinese integrated database is also there. And Taiwan and Mesh, I think we can go for the Indian medicine database. From there, we can have a, a different uh, phytochemicals which are uh, having bioactivities, those can be taken for screening. Then there is a drug bank, a searchable tool of <clears throat> interacting chemicals. Again, medicine plant genomics resources. Okay, for later, a chemistry database, pop chem is also there, therapeutic target database. All these databases from we can really, uh, there is a natural product database is also there. From there, we can contain almost 3 lakhs, 325,508 uh, natural compounds, molecules, yeah, means well-defined uh, chemical characteristics and its activities. Whereas uh, the other database is having 68,000 highly diverse natural com compounds which are having a different activities. So from this database, we can see that the phytochemicals and the structural uh, database, from there we can have a, whether the phenyl proponent rings are there or hydroxycinamic or benzoic acid rings are there, which can be have a, our interest. We can select from there. Further, we can go for the mechanical studies. After mechanical studies, we can go for in vitro assays. So you can, if you see the plants and different uh, taxonomical, you can see the complete KC plants will have more and more compounds which are having antimicrobial activity. Then followed by the uh, cupressaceae, lariaceae, and gingivaraceae. And even some of the important compounds are lamiaceae also you can find, uh, especially of veterinary interest, I'm telling. Okay, this by computational methods, total that there are 561 phytochemicals for study in silico, with by, basically we are bacterial targets, the biochemical bacterial targets. You can see that, especially out of this most, Best docking that they got with phenolics and flavonoid structures, then followed by the alkaloids and the steroidal substances. So that means the most notable target is they found is peptide deformalized. This enzyme is a target, especially E. coli and DNA ligase in case of Staphylococcus aureus. Right? These are the models. The, the flavor means they could find these two targets, especially for phenolics and flavonoids acting. And they have found good correlation with the interest. Whatever they see in, in, in silico studies, they have a good correlation with the in vitro assays also with these models. So for the past six or seven, seven years, there are 11,689 articles from 199 countries where when they screen, you can see the polyphenols and terpenes for the most active phytochemical study, either alone as part of plant extracts or a that means here, polyphenols, terpenes, and flavonoids. Again, flavonoid is also a polyphenol compound, but when you come, again, if you come to the narrow classification, flavonoids, polyphenolic acids, again, their terpenes are very simple and volatile uh, compounds. They're especially, they will act on the special thymol, carvacol, they comes from the terpenes. They're highly volatile, they're fastly absorbed and highly lipophilic. At the same time, they will disrupt the cell membrane of the plasma membrane there. That's the most common mechanism for the most of this antimicrobial action. So the number and position of phenolic hydroxy groups, double bonds, delocalized electrons, and conjugation with sugars in the case of flavonoids seem to be crucial for the antimicrobial. Structurally, you can see that phenolic hydroxy groups are important. Then there is there is phenyl with the some chain is there, then double bonds also important. Delocalized electrons and conjugation sugars in the case of flavonoids seem to be crucial for the antimicrobial capacity. 
again if you see the most of the literature is recent the combination of the phytochemicals with the beta lactam antibiotics were the most study and the inhibition of efflux was the most common standard means whatever the resistance developed by the efflux forms so it will be interfered with polyphenolics and ultimately enhance the beta lactam activity or uh, retrocyclins activity and thereby produce energy that means the antibacterial phytochemicals what they search they mainly essential oils i already told alkaloids again the terpenes and polyphenols they are most active they could find then common mechanism is basically it is a permeability so that is the ultimate target and some protein binding are the targets for this compounds and with this uh, many people also they prepared some formula formulations like capsules soft gels using this supposed the berberine piperin some of the tannins eugenol a special clove we have this eugenol so all are basically spices used in our culinary purposes so even green tea lycoricy and nowadays people are making and making some dosage form also and getting some results okay that means what we almost discussed in this uh, for the past 30 35 minutes first is because antibiotics are used in case of production amr got so because of amr we are looking for the alternatives when you are looking for the alternatives we found phytobiotics also an alternative and how this phytobiotics and different studies where we got better results and how we can get a screen what are the approaches we require so all we can summarize in this <clears throat> that means can't make up resistance the global presence and warranted to look for alternatives for antibiotics in medicine plants then phytobiotics are plant derived substance that shows antibacterial antioxidant and immunological activity phytobiotics are slowly replacing antibiotics in animal and poultry production and are being used along with the prebiotics and probiotics some of the phytobiotics alone are in combination with known antibiotics also produce synergy in therapy and can reduce antibiotic stosis flavonoids and phenolics are dominant over other phytochemicals in producing antibiotic activity then mechanistic screening will reduce the time and time and helps researchers in finding the molecules fast for testing antibiotic activity and sulfonamides and tetracycline and chloroquinolones are major residues in poultry products both in india and other parts of the world feeding antioxidant natural supplements helps the immunoprotection status of chicken thereby preventing infections does reduce the use of antibiotics in poultry production and gut microbiota friendly phytochemicals improves production parameters in poultry that say poultry production reduces antimicrobial resistance both in birds and humans to consume poultry products so that means here one interesting way, when we did some work chloroquinolones with the antioxidants we will get a negative results because uh, whereas beta lactams and tetracyclines with phytochemicals we will get a positive results and we get it even some of the xanthones which are cheaply available they may not be active themselves but when they combine with the beta lactam or tetracycline they have very good activity for uh, anti biofilm so that really helps but whereas with fluoroquinolones the antioxidants we found that there is an antagonistic each other rather we are while using fluoroquinolones we have to test this phytochemicals which are not having any antioxidant like xanthos they may be helpful but the antioxidants which are having very good activity but when you combine with fluoroquinolones a little bit uh, we should be cautious because they are going to be antagonistic each other so that means we have the constraints uh, presence of phytochemical quality quantity varies in the plants suppose if you say crude plant we can the quantity of phytochemical presence is we are really it varies the translation of in vitro studies in that case in vivo finally clinical trials has been major challenge 
especially when you're using uh, some of the crude extracts of one origin to other origin. So bioavailability is one lip biggest limitation in case of this phytochemical because these are having hydroxyl molecule. They will be easily gluconidase, sulfate, sulfation, methylation will be there in the metabolism, thereby their bioavailability reduce. Rather, now because the nanotechnology and uh, emulsion technology is there, then phytosomes are there. Many comp uh, these are encapsulated in the phytosomes. So especially their combination with prebiotics, also they are making uh, some headway, headway in this. So that means here delivery system should be evolved for single cell because then the bio, low bioavailability, the delivery system should be evolved. And quality control is another bottleneck because since in case of synthetic drugs, we actually can uh, we can check the by its chemical confirmation by HPLC or something else. But that is a, one of the biggest challenge when you are using your food extracts. So rather we can quantify the phytochemicals and the phytochemicals can be used. Uh, then we can find the, what is the rich source for these phytochemicals. Whether it is in percentile, you can mark. Suppose 20 percentile quercetin is there in this plant, or 30 percent, or 40 percent. So these percentages, uh, percentages, you can fix and quantify it. Thereby, you can utilize in the because the quantification is important. That is more important in the uh, to translate the studies into the real uh, in the industry for the industry. So whatever the figures and tab uh, tables taken from the different research and review papers that duly acknowledged for, for presenting this seminar or webinar or talk for me. So thank you very much for your patience and hearing and uh, hope I can interact with another ten to ten. I miss I, I have not taken much time much time of you and I can have interaction with you people on any this topic in another 10 to 15 minutes. Thank you very much for all the organizers and uh, patient means well, the people who hear, hear this talk very patiently and we can interact. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Srinivas Rao. It's a wonderful presentation. You have, we, you have taken us into a different world where the science of phytochemicals as a, Generally, we being quality scientists, we always talk about the material. Like we have taken uh, amla, we have taken or uh, turmeric, we have taken and this kind of material, screw material only we always talk about in our uh, research. But you have gone beyond that and uh, gone into the uh, specifics of the chemicals, phytochemicals there and then the interactions with uh, the antibiotics commonly used as AGPs in poultry and which are to be used in combination and uh, where we have synergy, where we have antagonism, all those things. And also finally, you are summed up so nicely, giving the uh, the limitations also, constraints. Like when we talk about the herbal compounds, always the, is the quality or the quantity of the uh, uh, active principle in the material. But it varies from the age of the plant and also season of the year and also the soil, the place to place it varies. So unless uh, the phytochemical per se is uh, analyzed and quantified, then definitely we are going to have the variations in the results. So wonderfully covered. And I now, uh, Director, sir, uh, for your comments, please. <clears throat> yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Lajigaru. Uh, Dr. Srinivas Ragaru, thanks so much for an excellent presentation, actually. Uh, we are working in different aspects of uh, phytochemicals or phytobiotics uh, as an alternative to AGP, maybe nutrition aspect or uh, medicinal aspect, uh, as well as uh, anti-stress. Uh, we are using different phytobiotics or phytochemicals or herbal products uh, as an anti-stress factor. But we didn't know about the composition, whether it is phenyloid group, whether it is terp uh, terpentines or whatever you are telling. Uh, because uh, we do not have uh, any pharmacologist here or any biochemist here. Uh, so we didn't know what are the active ingredients in those uh, phytochemicals or the herbal products, whatever we are using as an alternative for AGP or anti-stress factor. So we have actually educated ourselves. So from my side, my compliments and congratulations to you. But I have only one question. 
and that was uh, that is there in my mind i have asked to some other colleagues uh, that uh, from 1990 or 95 up to 95 there was uh, production or development of antibiotics maybe third generation antibiotic fourth generation antibiotic whatever we call but now uh, the scenario has come that uh, we are using ciprofloxacin or norfloxacin or that group of antibiotics uh, maybe for different uh, as an antibacterial or antimicrobial agents uh, and uh, also nalidixic acid these are also being used for the last maybe 15 20 years for different uh, uh, antimicrobial as an antimicrobial agent but uh, there after after 1995 or so uh, there was no development of antibiotics and and what is the reason i do not know because you have uh, you have you, you made a uh, detailed deliberation on different active ingredients uh, whatever we are using uh, the phytobiotics or the phytochemicals and what is there the active anti and uh, the ingredients or the active uh, uh, this thing active compound uh, which are actually uh, being used as, as a, either anti stress or uh, antibiotic but why we are not producing the antibiotic or the Uh, if we know uh, because uh, probably you have reviewed in detail uh, as you are telling uh, 149 countries and thousands of uh, literature are there thousands of research articles are there and maybe many numbers of review articles are there and you have gone through all those and you are a man of uh, pharmacology so what may be the reason behind that that uh, i want to know so that this uh, antimicrobial resistance whatever we are facing and many deaths are there in human being and in many many species it is not only human being we are concerned only about human being in many species it, it is happening so what is the actual reason i do not know but we know the basics as you have uh, to mentioned in during your presentation that uh, these are the active ingredients or the active compounds which are being used uh, from the phytochemicals uh, and they are being used as the antimicrobials or maybe anti stress agents and so and so forth please so okay sir thank you very much sir for your this one and one thing i would like to know because i'd like to tell whatever the antimicrobials develop after 2000 we don't get any new molecule even humans also correct uh, we are making combinations here and there linzide and linzide compounds just like cephalosporins and we are making chains and everything the problem is uh, over the period of time hygiene levels in the western countries have been reached to such an extent that uh, most of the bacterial infections are almost negligible whereas coming in our country okay there is a one is innate immunity is there another is the market is not there for antibiotics because the market dry ultimately driving force for because suppose if you want to develop a new molecule they have to go a lot of regulations they have to spend a lot of money on that so the ultimately they are uh, economically they may not get that that much like cardiovascular and uh, diabetes and uh, other uh, even anti cancer they are rich very very demanding and so that uh, people concentrate on the molecules because whatever the available molecules the antibiotics were going with so that is the reason why many people are not going for a new especially in case of veterinary you just neglect you are zero this whatever uh, uh our patent drugs in the humans will be using in the uh, veterinary the only last molecule is enrofloxacin why really that is only exclusively developed for the that is as a veterinary use because that is also a purpose because when they started that uh, synthesizing that compound when they used in humans they got psychological reactions thereby they they turned this molecule into the veterinary aspect and its metabolite ciprofloxacin came into the human use um, that means here one is market the another is uh, anti chemotherapy especially bacterial diseases has come down means almost uh, not in a significant in other parts of the world whereas only in african countries and some little, uh, developed countries more another thing is whatever the available molecules we can still go uh, we can go only the problem is whenever the pneumonia comes especially in old age 60 above after 60 the compounds are not sufficient because at the time uh, most of the uh, beta lactam cephalosporins they will get resistance especially this uh, pseudomonas and other uh, pneumonic infection cocci and other thing uh, that is the one reason we are not that is the reason why people emphasizing on the two combination therapy 
how best we can use whether we can revisit the old drugs because now the people are using lot of drugs used uh, the recent era drugs we got resistant if you see the benzyl penicillin we may get sensitive for some of the compounds now because the bacteria also it is evolving itself that is a recent phenomenon they have seen the old drugs are coming with a, a better uh, results in case of uh, the new resistant organisms i think it is a one uh, phenomena what we have to see the targeting um, bacterial targets also suppose when uh, whatever the battery bacterial targets they are uh, synthesizing that also targets human human biomolecular molecules so means that, that is the reason why regulations will be very high all they have to money spend lot of money on that that is the reason why one thing one limitation is there but just like uh, any pandemic comes then the people ultimately look for the research again what are the new molecules we have bacterial pandemic is so far after plague nothing is there in the world probably that one reason they their limitation was there in the developing the new molecule the antibiotic so i got the similar type of answer from my colleagues okay sir uh, why why the antibiotics are not being developed because market is not there as you are yes, telling sir. Yes. but uh, you know uh, we are we are having many patients across the world uh, yes. maybe which are uh, we don't have any alternative for the methicillin resistant uh, you know staphylococcus aureus yes, yes. or maybe there are some bacteria which can produce the beta lactamase enzyme yes, and yes, whatever your active ingredient you were telling uh, mentioning during your presentation about beta lactam and all that yes. so all these problems uh, we are having Uh, and uh, you know uh, because of mycobacterium tuberculosis that is one disease uh, i i'm 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 a layman actually i don't i am no. not from that field but uh, you know mycobacterium tuberculosis there are many antibiotics and all the antibiotics are getting slowly resistant and resistant and uh, uh, and many countries particularly asian and african countries uh, they are suffering from the mycobacterium tuberculosis and which is also a genetic disease and and if you see across the world uh, mycobacterium bovis uh, that is also genetic disease and we do not have any uh, answer for that so i think uh, i think we should have in future uh, certain alternatives uh, or certain antibiotics uh, which will be useful for the human kind because uh, uh, we don't have the alternatives now for some of the uh, diseases where we do not have any antibiotics where we do not have any drug so uh, for the human welfare for the welfare of the animals or birds uh, we should uh, we should focus our research on that particular aspect and but uh, finally my compliments and congratulations you have taken lot of pains for uh, reviewing all the literatures related to phytochemicals or phytobiotics and uh, their active ingredients and those that active ingredients which are being used uh, maybe as as antimicrobial and their biochemical pathway whether it is uh, preventing the uh, means uh, 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 cytoplasmic membrane or cell membrane uh, all you know we have read during uh, our bbsc studies that this antibiotic is uh, doing the uh, uh, the cell membrane of the bacteria and they are preventing the multiplication of the bacteria this particular antibiotic we have read long back 30 years so i cannot remember all those but uh, again i was just uh, recapitulating all those uh, memories uh, which we have during our bbc studies in pharmacology uh, but it was a really a very nice presentation so once again my compliments and congratulations to you for like uh, for taking lot of pains uh, for this kind of presentation thank you so much and there are uh, i have seen Uh, initially 55 to 60 participants were there so all of us uh, uh, have got benefited from this particular presentation and this type of presentation sh should be there and i think uh, uh, from the icr from the central government under the amrit mahotsav whatever lecture series are uh, being done by different institutes all of we are getting educated in different field other than uh, our own field so thank you so much dr raju garu and dr sinivas rao garu for an excellent presentation thank, thank you, you thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, any more uh, questions or supplements uh... sir i would like to uh, get some clarification from 
highly knowledgeable person srinivas rao sir sir thank you very much really we really enjoyed your presentation sir uh, i have two things to know one is what is the best combination of uh, phytochemicals which are very effective against antibiotic growth promoter if we if at all we want to use so that is one question and the second one which i would like to know so as we are knowing we are having so, so many phytochemicals what is the safe level uh, like na maximum level permissible level to be used uh, maybe in poultry diets our interest is poultry diets okay there yeah, okay is there any uh, is there any such kind of literature or information that is there sir uh, it is there actually one thing one is uh, most of this uh, phytochemicals what we are presenting here they are grass substances generally regarded as safe for them there is no question of permissible level because they are di dietary so uh, they are, you can use another thing is their bioavailability is very less so nothing to cause uh, nothing to worry about it number 3 what is the best combination what you ask one, uh, one thing i will tell one is you have to always go for the phenyl propionide that means one is phenolic acid the one phenolic acid plus flavonoid and there is a one more steroidal saponin especially steroidal saponin this is known as three ring circus in whatever human life or animal life our most of the receptors are based on this one fatty one chain on organic alkene chain with phenyl ring you see our amino acids are ultimately proteins are they are the receptors only two amino acids are aromatic ring that is phenylalanine and tyrosine so that means phenylalanine and tyrosine only one simple phenolic ring with propionoid chain that is see this is the balance what happens one is histidine another phenyl propionoid you can say just see the arginine which is required for the one type of balance nitric acid synthesis one type of immunomodulation where phenylalanine is required for one type of immunomodulation or suppose our our even if you take for example human health where phenylalanine is required for adrenaline if your sympathetic system is alert system is required stress system is required the body has to survive so more suppose if you want to run that more adrenaline is required that means phenylalanine system will be enhanced but it has to come back normal otherwise you will be on the running only you will be losing your energy so we have to make it modulation there is another arginine other other systems are there or histidine systems are there which will make it uh, you balance the homeostasis that means simple phenolic ring one steroidal saponin steroidal saponins will be rich in especially in case of your uh, yam yam and uh, even triple steroids uh, because most of the africans are uh, uh, they eat all the yam Uh, that is the reason why the potassium rich diet potassium rich diet actually balances stress to the back to the normal uh, okay that means uh, quercetin and uh, phenolic acid it will be whenever infectious stress is there it counter so always make a steroidal saponin phenolic acid and flavonoid this combination definitely it will works because based on my biochemical uh, knowledge and my experience with the research i have seen that that's the reason why many people they say this is a three ring circus one simple phenolic flavonoid which is having two phenolics and another is steroidal saponin actually the your source code to it is really controlled by this type of uh, three, three ring circus vitamin d3 steroidal ring and quercetin other molecules are there even berberine in alkaloid which is having three phenolic ring so only really controlled very well uh, as in case of africa where they, they have not taken any vaccinations or, or uh, whatever it is that uh, no medicine other at all no, low mortality was there in the africa in sars cov2 because traditionally they are taking this yam and trial saponins and other things that's the reason why they were survived the onslaught of sars cov2 then the other part of the thank you very much sir really very okay. okay very useful i think we should work on this aspect yes sir uh, good sir thank you okay. thank there you there is one question in the chat uh, chat box okay that is what is your opinion regarding using only phytochemical compounds in place of antibiotics can we replace okay. antibiotics totally with phytochemicals no actually uh, replace as a food additive you can totally you can replace 
with the, I already told that this is three ring circus. We can, if you have a, this type of combination, but when you want to combination with the flow of means, uh, you can, it can be therapeutically very good adjunctive. Yes, in uh, growth promotion, yes, totally you can replace. But still, uh, the bioavailability that we have to check, but yes, we can replace as a feed additives. But in case of therapeutic, it can be adjunctive, not totally. Thank you. Any any more questions or uh, supplements? Okay. Even in the future, also anybody is interested, they can contact me by email. I'm really uh, rather glad to have such type of interaction. Who are working in the phytochemicals? Yeah, this area is really very, very important. And now, since the country has resolved to replace all the AGPs from poultry feed in a couple of years, by 2025, so BIS already uh, has notified uh, the, the wide circulation. The document also has gone into the public. So by 2025, all kinds of antibiotics are going to be withdrawn from poultry feed. And right now, also, only those uh, which are not clinically important for human medicine are only being continued. And the remaining also, definitely, there is a need to replace them or totally uh, withdraw them. And at that point of time, naturally, all these alternatives uh, will assume a lot of uh, importance because the, the, to sustain the production levels, uh, performance levels in the farms, naturally, we have to have all these things because the biosecurity, of course, we always aim at improving the biosecurity levels in the farms. But still, uh, uh, there are compromises here and there. So this... I think is going to be the future for poultry, uh, the herbal-based uh, alternatives for AGPs. Thank you so much, Dr. Srinivasrao, my old friend, my best friend, uh, for sparing your time. I know you are now on leave at uh, uh, a different place, but still you could make uh, time uh, uh, for uh, this presentation and wonderful presentation. And uh, I think uh, this is one of the highest attendance uh, in the recent times for uh, our webinars.